Well, praise the Lord. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the I Bible School. We're talking about Holy Ghost ministry, and we're coming up on Lesson 23. We're continuing our lesson on bells and pomegranates. We're going to see exactly today what the scripture has to say about these two things. So stay with us. All right. Uh, our lesson that we started last week was uh, lesson number 22, talking about bells and pomegranates. Well, uh, we didn't actually reveal what bells and pomegranates actually are, but uh, in the Old Testament, the priest's garment was lined at the hem with a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. And uh, so we see that this is actually a type of the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So in our last lesson, we gave you a definition of the nine gifts of the Spirit that Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So what I'd like to do is briefly review these uh, nine gifts of the Spirit, and uh, then we're going to go on and see what the Scripture has to say about bells and pomegranates. So uh, praise God. Let's get right into it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10, Paul gives us the list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the manifestations of the Spirit. And he tells us this, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So Paul very succinctly and, and clearly gives us uh, the nine different gifts of the Holy Spirit that can be in operation in any believer's life. Uh, really, any believer who's filled with the Spirit, because these are all given by one and the self-same Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, uh, mostly these gifts are going to operate in conjunction with ministry offices uh, on a consistent level. Now, any Christian can receive a miracle from time to time. He can uh, operate in uh, the gift of tongues, uh, Really, that's the only gift that he would operate consistently in on a personal level. But he can operate in a word of knowledge. He can gain that from time to time or a word of wisdom or discerning of spirits. But when it comes to ministry offices, these are like uh, tools of the trade. These are things that a, a, a minister might use on a regular basis. Um, for instance, you know, an individual could use uh, a hammer from time to time, but uh, a carpenter is going to use one every day. And that would be essentially the difference between uh, how the gifts operate or are used uh, in an individual Christian or someone who's called to a ministry office in full-time ministry. Uh, but uh, let's let's go down through here and <clears throat> and mention these uh, gifts again. Again, this uh, the categorization or these categories were given by Howard Carter, who was a Pentecostal pioneer. And while he was imprisoned in a in a prison during World War One, God gave him the uh, revelation of these gifts, and he categorized them into three category categories: uh, power gifts revelation gifts and utterance gifts and just very uh, very quickly the power gifts are the gift of faith the working of miracles and the gifts of healings the revelation gifts are the word of wisdom the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits and then the utterance gifts are the gift of tongues or divers tongues different kinds of tongues uh, prophecy and interpretation of tongues, or rather, I should say, prophecy, divers' tongues, and interpretation of tongues. 
So uh, again, the definition of the gift of faith is uh, it's the faith of God to receive a blessing or impart a blessing. Uh, it's unusual faith to speak and believe above and beyond a person's normal faith. The gift of faith uh, could be used to impart blessings such as the baptism with the Holy Spirit uh, or uh, receive a blessing such as uh, a physical need met. Uh, it can be uh, the gift of faith would have to be an operation when Jesus walked on the water, when he raised the dead, uh, when he received provision or multiplied the loaves and fishes. There's other gifts in operation as well, uh, but uh, uh, suffice it to say, the gift, the gift of faith uh, was an operation in those instances as well. For instance, to, to raise someone from the dead, you'd need at least um, three, maybe four uh, gifts of the Spirit in operation because it would take great faith uh, to even call someone back from the dead. And then you'd have to have the, heal, uh, the gift of healing in operation to maintain their healing. Uh, you'd have to have working of miracles because that's definitely a suspension of the natural order of things. Uh, so uh, you have all these gifts in operation, the gift of faith, working of miracles, the gifts of healing uh, in operation. So all the power gifts are involved in raising someone from the dead, for instance. But uh, the gift of, uh, of faith uh, imparts blessing or receives a blessing. It's faith beyond the normal believer's faith. Working of miracles is a suspension of nature or the natural order of things. When Moses stretched out the, his rod and, and uh, divided the seas right and left, that was a working of miracles. Uh, it suspended the natural order of things. When Jesus commanded the storm to be calm, that was a, a miracle in operation. When uh, the loaves and fishes were were multiplied, that was a working of miracles in in operation. So uh, uh, the working of miracles is a suspension of the natural order. It's uh, a miracle will supersede uh, that which is in nature. It receives help or, or blessing from God. Uh, a miracle healing is often instantaneous parting the sea, calming the storm, walking on water, all those were working of miracles. And then, of course, the gifts of healing. Now, that gifts is, gift of healing is plural. It's almost like a cluster of grape, grapes. Uh, it's all one gift, but there's different aspects to that gift. For instance, someone might have the gift of healing in regards to bones or in regards to cancer or in regards to uh, physical growths or eyes, ears, nose, and throat or Someone may uh, have uh, be a Holy Ghost chiropractor, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but it has nothing to do with natural healing or, or uh, um, the natural progression of healing. But it's, it's a gift of healing uh, that comes from God that only God can bring about. So those are the power gifts. And then the revelation gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. The word of wisdom has to do with a portion, not all God's wisdom, but a portion of God's wisdom revealing his mind and purpose for an individual or a situation. It often speaks of God's intent and purpose and can speak of future events. Now, when it comes to the word of knowledge, the word of knowledge deals with knowledge that's in the present or in the past has nothing to do with uh, future events. A word of knowledge is information that only God can know of present or past events in an individual or a situation. So, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> if you've lost your keys, you might need a word of knowledge to find them. My wife uh, has an uncanny ability to to just know where something is, and and uh, she'll pray, and God will literally give her a word of knowledge. And of course, we can use those kind of things on a regular basis, but God wants these gifts to be a blessing to others. The, these gifts, uh, and I should make this clear, these gifts are not just for ourselves to heap them upon ourselves, although you can use them 
and benefit from them personally, but these gifts are part of that river that flows out from the throne of God. You see, there's a well of salvation that wells up within our spirit that ministers to us. But Jesus said that when the spirit, speaking of the spirit, he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And these are designed to be a blessing to other people. So when we speak of power gifts, revelation gifts, and even the utterance gifts, uh, they're not just for us personally, but primarily they are to be used and utilized to be a blessing to other people. So keep that in mind. Uh, the word of knowledge is knowledge that's known uh, of past or present events. Not all knowledge, but just a portion. And then there's discerning of spirits, which is a revelation gift. And that has to do with seeing into the realm of the spirit. Uh, you might see an angel. You might see a demon. You might uh, see these situations in the realm of the spirit because everywhere we go, we're not we're living and we see and we function in this natural and physical world but there's a spiritual world and it's not far off it's right here if our eyes were to be open you, you might see an angel uh, you might see a demon you might see uh, something going on um, around you in the spiritual realm it's a, it's a different dimension but it's very close by so it's like God himself. He's a very present help in time of trouble. We think in terms of distance in the physical, but in the spiritual, uh, there's almost no such thing as distance in the realm of the spirit. So um, uh, it, it's just seeing into that next realm. But uh, discerning of spirits can also have to do with with good or bad spirits or, or discerning what is good or bad uh, in an individual. And um, that is uh, uh, definitely something that could be helpful as we work uh, and minister among people. Praise God. Uh, the final group that Howard Carter or category that Howard Carter uh, defined uh, were utterance gifts. And these are gifts that say something. Let me let me say that again. Power gifts do something. Revelation gifts reveal something. And utterance gifts say something. And the first utterance gift that we see is prophecy. It's a divinely inspired utterance in, in a known language. Uh, the simple gift of prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3, is that it edifies, exhorts, and comforts. Then we have the gift of divers tongues or different tongues. Now, divers tongues, uh, again, it's a divinely inspired utterance in an unknown language. All right. Um, you speak out mysteries when you pray in tongues or speak in tongues. The gift is for private and devotional use. It's for personal edification. <coughs> Jude says you build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Paul says it's one of the weapons of our warfare that we should pray uh, with all manner of prayer in the spirit. Uh, speaking of praying in tongues. So these things are given to uh, to every believer that, that, that would choose it. And I would say this, that, that the gift of tongues is the initial evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. And we see this, and we've seen this in previous lessons, uh, but we see that throughout the book of Acts, that any time the Holy Spirit is poured out and given, that tongues is somewhere in the mix. So uh, praise God for it. But tongues is also, uh, and can also be used in public. So uh, it's a divinely inspired entrance in an unknown language all right uh, and for the public use of it it's used in conjunction with a third utterance gift which is interpretation of tongues that's where someone <coughs> uh, is present in a room and he hears the tongue and he interprets uh, the meaning of that tongue in the known language and uh, tongues spoken to God uh, it's not necessary that it be interpreted. But tongues spoken to men should always be interpreted. Otherwise, 
they shouldn't be interpreted. If there's no interpreter present in a church service, uh, the uh, one who speaks in tongues should remain silent. In fact, that's exactly what uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 28 tells us. It says, if there be no interpreter, uh, let him keep silence and let him speak to himself and to God. So um, at any rate, uh, uh, the gift of tongues in conjunction with interpretation of tongues will bring revelation to the church. But uh, not only revelation, but knowledge, prophecy, or doctrine. So tongues with interpretation can be more than just the simple gift of prophecy. It can bring revelation to a service. It can bring uh, knowledge, prophecy, or doctrine. Um, in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, Paul says that this gift, especially these two gifts, ought to be in operation when we come together. Uh, he says, how is it then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. So in a church service, we ought to have not just singing and worship or just preaching and teaching, but we ought to have uh, a tongue, a revelation, and an interpretation. And when there's a qualified uh, interpreter, uh, there'll always be revelation that comes forth with this public use of the gift of tongues with interpretation. So there you have it. Those are the uh, uh, the nine manifestations of the gifts, gifts of the Spirit as Paul lists them in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and divided into categories, the power gifts, the revelation gifts, and the utterance gifts. Uh, but what we want to see here is is what the Bible has to say further about these bells and pomegranates, and we see uh, we see this in uh, Exodus twenty eight and verse twenty nine. It says, "And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel and the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually." And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod of all of blue. This is the robe that the priest wears in his garment. And there shall be an hole in the top of it in the midst thereof it shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it as it were the whole of an habergian <coughs> that it be not rent now in verse 33 he's talking about the priestly garment he begins here and he says and beneath upon the hem of it thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe round about, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord, and when he cometh out that he die not. Now, uh, to fully stand in any office of ministry, there needs to be fruit and gifts. Now, the Old Testament is given to us to uh, unveil and give us insight into the New Testament. <clears throat> Someone said that the, the uh, Old Testament is a New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And so when he's talking about uh, the priestly garment, he says this garment ought to be lined with bells and pomegranates. And so bells represent gifts and pomegranates represent fruit. So in any ministry gift, they are operating with fruit and with gifts. Pomegranates, again, representing fruit and bells representing gifts. Going on in Exodus 39 and verse 22 through 26, 
Uh, Moses says, and he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe as a hole of an harbergian, harbergian with a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about the hem of the robe to minister in, as the Lord commanded Moses. So isn't this a beautiful picture of how bells and, uh, or how the ministry is to operate? We are to operate with fruit and with gifts. We must have the fruit of the Spirit because it's the fruit that gives us the motivation uh, to minister with, uh, with the gifts of the Spirit. We've said this previously, but uh, uh, our motivation to touch and minister to people is this divine flow of compassion. It's the love of God. And really, uh, that's what Paul said the fruit of the Spirit is. Some people have likened the the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, uh, uh, I believe it's chapter 5, where Paul mentions the fruit, the fruit. He says, now the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is. That's our motivation. And the different aspects of love, like the uh, cluster of grapes, is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Nine fruit of the Spirit. Uh, and it's all love. These are all manifestations of love. Uh, manifest these uh, nine different ways. Uh, but uh, in other words, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such as these, there's no law. But uh, we've got to have the love in order to flow and minister in the gifts of the Spirit. And we need the gifts for love to have an avenue to touch and reach people. That's why I say it's one thing to have sympathy, you know, to feel badly for a person. It's it's another thing to have empathy or to feel what they feel. And uh, <clears throat> those are, you know, it's great to, to have those things, but those won't make a difference in a person's life. It's only the love of God. It's only compassion that will reach out and touch and change a person's situation through the gifts of of the Holy Ghost. And that's what we're talking about. We've got to have these fruit and gifts operating together. You can't have one without the other. Without, If all you have is gifts, you won't have a motivation to use those gifts. If all you have is fruit, you won't have uh, any avenue to touch and reach people with the love that you have. So we've got to have gifts. We've got to have fruit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1, uh, the Bible declares that we are ministers of the new covenant. Uh, and I want to keep in mind this. That <coughs> the priest's robe is blue, and this is the color of healing in the scriptures. Fruits and gifts. But let's look at 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we as some others uh, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Praise God. This is a great description of spiritual ministry in the New Covenant. Second Corinthians 3 and 1 through 6. Now, the Bible calls us kings and priests. As believers, we all have ministry. 
and we're all involved with uh, ministry. But in Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, the Bible says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which us which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from jesus christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Praise God. So the Bible reveals that we are kings and priests unto God. In Galatians five twenty two through 23, he explains exactly what this fruit is. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So we are to minister uh, as priests, just as Aaron ministered in the Old Testament, and we are to carry these uh, fruit and gifts, bells and pomegranates of the Spirit. And uh, this is what uh, Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are diversities of gifts, starting at verse 4, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, uh, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. I want to start again in verse 4. He says, now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. These gifts aren't for yesterday. They are for some point in the future. They are to be used and utilized by the body of Christ, uh, by the ministry offices, and by individual believers. They're to be utilized by all of us. Uh, it's diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Differences of administrations or ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diff diversities of operations. All these gifts can operate different ways. All the ministries can operate different ways, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And he lists these uh, gifts of the Spirit. Now, we listed, we listed them and mentioned them in categories pri uh, earlier, but now I want to list these uh, and mention them as they are listed in in this chapter so uh, praise god stay with us here So they're listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting again at verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. I believe God gives us these gifts in this order for a specific purpose and a specific reason. Uh, he goes on and says uh, the third gift he mentions, to another faith, or the gift of faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, and to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now, I believe God lists them this way, and Paul lists them this way, uh, it, uh, to uh, to see that they work in conjunction with the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when we speak of the fruit, we have to go back over to Galatians chapter 22, uh, or not tw chapter 22, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, where he mentions these gifts, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. 
Uh, now, if we combine those together, it, it really gives us an interesting view of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what are we talking about? A bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate. These gifts are to work in conjunction with the fruit of the Spirit. So let's look at the first fruit that he mentions and the first gift. The first uh, the first fruit is love, and the first gift is the word of wisdom. Now, wisdom, James tells us in James chapter 3, is pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Wow, what a great definition of love and wisdom, how wisdom works. And we see that true wisdom is infused with the love of God. So you can see how the word of wisdom really flows and moves in conjunction with the fruit of love. The next fruit we have <clears throat> is joy, and that lines up with the word of knowledge. Now, when you gain knowledge in life, there comes a certain joy and satisfaction of of knowing. And so we can see how joy and knowledge work together. The next fruit that we have is peace. And peace goes right along with faith. Amen. Remember when the disciples were in the boat and Jesus was asleep, he was peaceful. He was fine. Uh, but uh, the disciples were all up in arms and they were concerned, Lord, what's going to happen to us? But he got up and said, peace be still. You know, if he had known what they had known, uh, or if they, if he had had the P, if he, had, if they had had the faith that he had, they would have had peace. And so you can see how peace and faith go together. Now, the next fruit we see is long suffering. And that's right in conjunction with the gifts of healing. So many times uh, we suffer things and we just have to endure as we believe God, as we trust God. And when a gift of healing comes along, uh, our long suffering is paid off. Uh, it, it pays off. So uh, long suffering, the fruit of long suffering uh, really lines right up with the gift of healing. Uh, let's go on to the next one, gentleness. Gentleness. And that lines up with the working of miracles. And so how, how do these two uh, correlate or, or come together? Well, in order for us to uh, receive a miracle, uh, we need to approach it with, uh, with humility and with, uh, uh, with a gentle spirit. You know, because we understand it's not about us, it's about God. God is the worker of miracles. He's the one that brings a miracle about. And uh, we simply uh, we simply receive what he's done. And in order to do that, we can't stir it up. We can't make it happen. We just have to approach God and the situation with gentleness. The, uh, the next uh, fruit of the Spirit is goodness that's mentioned, goodness. And that lines up with with prophecy or uh, uh, the prophetic, uh, the gift of prophecy. Uh, and the simple gift of prophecy is good. It gives us God's intention. It gives us God's pur purpose. Uh, the gift of prophecy edifies, exhorts, and brings comfort to us. And, and so it's a good thing to hear from God. And, and it shows forth the goodness of God. Really, uh, prophecy shows us how good God is, that he is a good God. Uh, the next gift we see in operation, or the next fruit, is faithfulness. Faithfulness, or faith, by the, uh, the, the same Spirit. Well, well, we're talking about the fruit here, the fruit of faith, and it actually has to do with faithfulness. God is faithful. And it comes in line with discerning of spirits, discerning of spirits. I think of Elisha when he was surrounded by <coughs> enemy armies and his uh, his 
associate, his servant there, said, uh, Lord, what are we going to do? And God opened up the eyes of the servant uh, and showed him that those that were with him were more than those that were against him. And it showed the faithfulness of God and showed that God was uh, always with him. And, and that's what the Bible says. He's with us always, even to the end of the earth. And, you know, if we understand what belongs to us in God, if we're walking at that level in God, th there's nothing that can harm us. I mean, Jesus walked through their midst and we see, see the faithfulness of God as they're trying to kill him. Uh, Elijah was delivered and his servant, even though a mighty army had come against them. So uh, uh, seeing into the spirit can really show us the faithfulness of God. The, the next fruit that we see is meekness. And uh, meekness is to be teachable and to, to be humble, to be teachable. And uh, that's where the gift of tongues comes in. And so many people have rejected and missed God's best because they haven't approached God with meekness. In order for uh, the gift of tongues to be in full operation, we need a meek spirit, a teachable spirit, a humble spirit spirit. Now that doesn't mean we're weak. There's great strength in meekness, but we have to uh we have to be open enough and teachable enough to uh, uh speak in tongues because the Bible says many won't receive it. Uh Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah twenty eight with uh men of another tongue and other lips will I speak to this people yet they would not hear. It takes a meek spirit, a teachable spirit to receive from God, especially this gift of tongues. The Bible says that Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. He was able and willing to receive teaching and understanding from heaven. So we see how the fruit of meekness comes together with the gift of tongues. And then we have uh, this final gift is temperance, which is uh, a temperate lifestyle. You know, you don't overindulge. And so uh, interpretation of tongues lines up with this fruit temperance because it brings balance into our lives. It, it shows forth the, uh, the body of Christ uh, and how it works together, the, the unity and the and the flowing of the Holy Ghost together with tongues and interpretation of tongues. So this uh, this gift, interpretation of tongues, really lines up with uh, the fruit of temperance. So let me very quickly just go back over these. So we're going a little longer in this lesson, but that's all right. Um, love uh, reveals and and allows for the word of wisdom to be in operation. Uh, the word of wisdom is pure, peaceable, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works. And that really is uh, love, the fruit of the spirit. Then we have joy, the fruit, which, which when we have a word of knowledge, there's great uh, blessing and joy that comes when we flow and operate in a word of knowledge. Peace is in conjunction. The fruit of peace comes in conjunction with faith because when we operate in the gift of faith, then we have great peace that God is going to come through for us. Then there's uh, the fruit of long suffering with the gifts of healing. And in order for us to receive healing, we need to stand and believe God and trust him. Uh, even though there's, there's pain, there's suffering, praise God, if you'll if you'll deal with that, um, praise God. Hello. Did I do what? No, not really. I didn't tell her. I mean, she didn't buy the dog. I didn't say anything. I just told her. I wasn't sure whether we'd keep them or not, you know, probably we might, but. Mm 
Yeah. Well, listen, I'm right in the middle of recording a lesson, so I need to go here. I didn't really lecture. I didn't lecture her, honey. We just talked, and I, I said, uh, you know, I, I said, well, it kind of ended up that we. That's why I didn't want her to get the dog because we'd end up uh, having it. Yeah. All right. Well, let me finish my lesson here. Bye bye. Praise God. So peace is in conjunction with the gift of faith. Uh, because when that's in operation, we can all be at rest that God's in charge and taking care. And really, there's there's the rest of faith. And, and that comes in with, uh, with peace and the gift of faith. Then we have the fruit of long-suffering with healing. Uh, healing and, and long-suffering go together. Uh, in order for us to receive healing, sometimes we have to endure some things and stand and believe God. And if you will, then God can grant and give the gift of healing. Praise God. Then we have the uh, the fruit of gentleness with the working of miracles. Miracles is a spectacular thing, but in order for us to receive from heaven and from God, uh, we have to approach God with humility and gentleness and and sweetness to receive miracles from heaven. Praise God. Then we have goodness, the, the fruit of goodness and prophecy. And prophecy, uh, probably more than any other gift, reveals the goodness of God and his character. As we see, uh, uh, as words are spoken to edify, exhort, and comfort, we see God's goodness towards individuals. Then we have the gift of faithfulness. And by seeing into the realm of the spirit, we can see exactly what's going on and what's happening. And so God is faithful uh, to show himself strong on our behalf. And then we have meekness, the fruit of meekness and the gift of diverse tongues. In order for us to walk and minister along these lines, to utilize the gift of tongues, you have to be a meek and teachable individual. And then finally, there's the fruit of temperance, of balance, and certainly uh, the gift of interpretation of tongues uh, coincides with balance in the body of Christ because we don't operate alone. These are gifts that operate within the body of Christ together. So praise God. There you have it. Bells and pomegranates. This was lesson 23. Uh, join us again for our next lesson. And we're going to continue talking about Holy Ghost ministry. So God bless you.